Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tyne. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing 4K benchmarking on the brand new M1 Ultra chip, which is an Apple's new computer, the Mac Studio. And today we're going to be pushing the M1 Ultra to the absolute limit because 4K is a huge resolution. It's four times bigger than 1080p. And there isn't really a benchmarking test that can push the GPU harder than 4K resolution. So please make sure to watch until the end of the video. I'm finally going to solve the Witcher 3's stuttering issue so we can get some buttery smooth 4K gameplay without any stuttering at all. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing. It only takes a moment to do, but it really helps support this channel and the work that I do. So the first game we're going to be looking at is Dota 2, the popular online MOBA game. And I'm running this at the 4K resolution. So you can see here we're running at the second highest graphics settings. So there's a good compromise between performance and graphical fidelity. And you can also see from the settings that this is using the Vulkan renderer, so therefore it's making use of Molten VK, which translates API calls from Vulkan into Metal. So you can definitely tell that this game is very playable, even at the 4K resolution. And most of the time in the beginning of the game, we're reaching over 100 FPS. And as the game progresses and we get into team fights, then you'll see that the frame rate will dip into the 80s. However, it seems to be very playable, even when there's a lot going on at the screen at once. So I think that if you're a Dota 2 player and you're using the M1 Ultra, then you're going to be in good hands. So next up is StarCraft 2 and today I'm running this at 4K again and we're running at the medium settings. So I did try this on high settings but it did tank the frame rate a little bit too much. And because this is primarily a multiplayer game, I wanted to see if we could get relatively close to 60 FPS, especially as this is important when there are thousands of entities on screen at once. So in the beginning of the game, when there's not much happening, we're going around 80 to 90 FPS. As more units and buildings are created, the frame rate will drop. And so when things get really hectic, when there are carriers with lots of interceptors, it does drop a little bit below 40 FPS. However, most of the time, I would say that this is very playable. I would say that if you wanted to play the single player game at 4K at a higher setting, then this is gonna be very enjoyable. If you wanted a more competitive experience, just turn down the details of the resolution and you'll be able to hit that target 60 FPS. So next up is the game League of Legends. I'm basically very bad at this game, so don't judge me too much for my gameplay. So once again, we're running this game at 4K and I've chosen the medium graphics setting preset, which is a good compromise between performance and graphical fidelity. So a little bit like Dota 2 at the very beginning of the game when the creeps haven't all been generated and there isn't that much going on, we're getting around 120 to 130 FPS. And basically when you're creeping and you have solo fights as well, we're hovering around the 100 FPS mark. And then when we get to large team fights, the frame rate will start to tank and we're getting around 80 FPS and sometimes it will dip below this as well. So once again, this is extremely playable. Even at its most hectic, I didn't really see it go below 70 FPS and this is rendering at the 4K resolution. So next up is Baldur's Gate 3. So this is actually the only game in this list which actually has a native ARM version. So that means that it has been optimized for the M1 Apple Silicon chip. The other games that I've listed so far use the Rosetta 2 translation layer, which often incurs a performance hit. So here we're running Baldur's Gate 3 on the medium graphics preset running at 4K. And the performance here is actually very impressive, especially as this is one of the most recent AAA releases. It's actually technically not a release yet as it's still in early access. However, one of the issues is that I can't display the on-screen frame rate, and that's because the ARM build of this game isn't able to launch the Steam overlay. However, I am able to boot up the Intel Rosetta 2 version, and you can see a frame rate counter in the top left-hand side of the screen. So I can definitely tell that the ARM version of the game does run better than the Rosetta 2 version. However, this version is still getting 45 to 65 FPS, so it's still very good, and the ARM version is definitely going to be higher than this. It's still under 60 FPS at this graphic settings. However, if we do lower the graphical quality preset, then we are gonna get very close to hitting 60 FPS on the ARM build running at 4K resolution. So I know that Baldur's Gate 3 is under constant development. The introduction level actually plays completely differently to patch number three. 
which is the version that I tested last year. And I'm sure that there are gonna be graphical and performance improvements as time goes on. Anyway, it's very cool that we can get this recent AAA title working very well at the 4K resolution on the M1 Ultra. So lastly, we have The Witcher 3. So this is a Windows only game and it's being run through the crossover compatibility layer. So if you want to learn how to do this, then please make sure to check out my YouTube video, which teaches you how to install crossover and get games like The Witcher 3 or Grand Theft Auto 5 working on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So one of the main issues with running The Witcher 3 on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac is the amount of stuttering. And you can see here the red lines in the chart, they all represent dropped frames. And this could actually be fixed using an upgraded version of DXVK and Molten VK, which hasn't yet been bundled into the latest version of Crossover. However, if you follow the link in the description, you'll see a tutorial video where I teach you how to manually add the latest versions of those files into Crossover. And this dramatically improves the stuttering in Let's The Witcher go. 3. So this has completely fixed the problem with The Witcher 3. And this also applies to lower spec Macs as well. So you can use this on the MacBook Air with the original M1 chip or the M1 Pro or M1 Max chip, and you'll get a much smoother experience there as well. So The Witcher 3 is running here at the 4K resolution at the medium graphics preset. And I'll definitely say that this game is very playable at this resolution. So basically in the open world of The Witcher 3, we're getting around 60 to 70 FPS, which is really good considering that this is running at 4K. Even within combat sections, we're still hitting around 60 FPS and above. And it's actually quite rare to see it dip below this. It's only when there are certain spell effects that happen. So anyway, this way of running The Witcher 3 is a huge improvement to what we had in the past. And it's a really good indication of what the gaming performance of the M1 Ultra is like, especially considering that this is a Windows game running through Rosetta 2, which is using a translation layer in order to run on the ARM chip on a platform that it was never designed to run on. So I just want to leave my comments about the M1 Ultra. I do think that it's a very powerful chip. However, it costs way too much money for the performance that it offers. And despite the fact that the M1 Ultra is fully capable of playing these games in the 4K resolution, I'm still not really convinced convinced that this is going to be worth the money. Most people are just going to be better off buying the base model Max Dido with the M1 Max chip because this is literally half the price of the M1 Ultra chip. And with the money that you save, you could easily go ahead and buy a dedicated gaming PC or even a simple console. And generally you'll have a much better gaming experience. However, if you do have an M1 Ultra for work purposes and you want to do some gaming on the side, then you can see from this video that these games are perfectly capable of being run at the 4K resolution. So let me know in the comments if you're planning to purchase an M1 Ultra and whether you plan to use this for gaming on the side as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I'm going to be doing lots of other gaming benchmarks on the M1 Ultra chip. If you have a request, then please make sure to leave a comment below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.